What's up, guys and gals? Welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games. Okay, well, this one is published, but I've been talking to the developers, and they say that they're basically a tiny outfit that's being helped out by kind of like this publisher. But we got access to the beta for Once Human. And since it's been kind of boring lately, the last four or five months haven't really been blowing up the charts or anything else, I figured that we could take a look at this and do something new out here today. Uh, it's a very, very rare thing here on the channel that I take a look at anything that has to do with online gameplay or anything that has to do with MMORPGs. But given the recent failure of the day before, I think there's actually like a really, really big gap in the zombie survival genre right now that people are looking to fill. And once human came out with their beta like, the day after the day before decided to be a giant scam. And so having gotten into that beta, when a lot of people did not get into that beta, I figured I'd record some footage. We'd hang out for about 30 minutes. It'll be edited. We'll talk about what I like. We'll talk about what I don't like, the things that need to change, the things that can mostly stay the same. And hopefully it'll help you decide whether or not you wanted to get the game for yourself. So let's start with the core bare basics. What exactly is Once Human? Uh, Once Human is a zombie survival sandbox RPG, MMORPG, uh, that has a lot of players on the map at a time. It has base building, sort of Rust style. It has zombies. It has looting. It has hunger, thirst meters. It has leveling up, kind of Icarus style, to learn new blueprints and new things to help you get further and develop new technologies. It's got floating loot. It's got looting containers. It's got areas to explore. It's got bad guys all over the place. And the developers actually did something that I think is pretty laudable. Uh, rather than keeping the game behind closed doors and away from outside speculation, they've opened the game up for a beta right now that's going to run for over a month. And during that month, they're going to be unlocking further and further... I suppose, content inside the game from the beginning into late game uh, with like dungeons and things like that for testing purposes as well. This is a tremendously rare thing in the world of video games. Normally what you'll find with PR and things of that nature is that they kind of like know when they have a stinker on their hands and they kind of know when they have a winner on their hands. Otherwise they wouldn't be very good at their jobs. And so you'll see different companies do different things when they have a bad game on their hands. And the number one eyebrow raiser is typically that they're going to hide it from the outside public. They're not going to do big betas like this one right here because it gives away the fact that the game is kind of like dead in the water and a dud before it even releases, thus depriving them of sales. And so the fact that they're being so forthright with this test and inviting a lot of people they're running the servers right now at five times capacity and everything is still smooth and feeling good the fact that they're doing that is actually really encouraging to my eye so I kind of wanted to make a video part of it was also that I've been sort of bored and I want to try something new out here today so we're gonna give it a go like I said we're gonna play for about 30 minutes see if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or pass on if after watching this you wanted to get the game for yourself I got a link for you down below in the description you can check that out. The beta was open for like the first five days, but they ended up getting like way too many people jumping onto the servers. So they've closed it down right now. You've got to sign up and they're doing like rollouts of keys at this point. I was lucky enough that I kind of got in before they shut that all down. But the beta still will be running for like a month and I'm sure as they stress test, they'll let more and more people on in. That link will be down there for you. On top of that, you can also find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I've been streaming this game for the last couple days. Just in case you wanted to see the full unadulterated process with no editing from the beginning of the game with the storyline all the way to where we are right now that's there in VOD format but let's get this thing cruising so in Once Human you take on the role of a guy that's called a mayfly uh, you're a person that wakes up in a government facility inside of sort of like this back the tank or like I don't know this culto tank from like Star Wars and you climb on out of it with a bunch of neo style tubes all over you and you've got to figure out what happened. You come out to a world that's been annihilated by a phenomenon called the Starfall, which is effectively the stars fell from the sky. It spread this material called stardust all over the place that caused us to have a mass extinction event, and the stardust gets into people's lungs and converts them into zombies and monsters that want to consume the flesh of others. Uh, the game is heavily, heavily Kojima-based, by the way. You can tell very, very much right now that this game was made by somebody that really, really admires Kojima because the mobs in this game are weird. You can see them right there. We're actually fighting like an umbrella monster right now and they've got kind of like the snappy choppy thing going on. Wipe her out real quick and then she summons rain from the sky that deteriorates your health. 
Cool thing is, whenever you fight one of these special enemies right here... Oh, God, okay. Apparently there's rain on her right there, too. Is it following me? Oh, it's following me. That's no bueno. All right, let's stay away from it. I'm going to pop an activator real fast. There we go. I've got stim packs, so we're going to be all right. But i got to run from the rainfall. I don't know if it can follow me indoors. Let's find out. Uh, it can indeed follow you indoors. That's going to be one of those things that needs to change. I just want to loot my body. Can I loot my body? Is that all right? Uh, with these special enemies, they always drop some kind of weird tool. Like there's like a briefcase that fires money grenades. Uh, there's an umbrella that summons clouds of acid. There's a spotlight that melts the enemy on like a molecular level. Because you are a firefly, you can use psychic powers to interact with corrupted objects in interesting ways and blow up tons of enemies. Is the rough idea, and that was one of the random rare spawns right there that you can take out. You can always tell that they're rare spawns because they drop money. Uh, so like, I can use psychic powers to pick up this barrel right here, for example. And this is a very, very simple interaction. But, like, I could pick up the barrel, and then I could throw it at that zombie right there, and it blows him up a little bit. See what I mean? Uh, but there's a lot of little interactivities like that that the game is going to expect you to participate in. But at its core, this game is a third-person shooter. The best way that I know how to describe this title to my fellow gamers is that the game that this reminds me of the most, actually, is a game called Defiance that came out probably about 10 years ago. Sort of a defunct MMORPG. Uh, Firefall is probably in there as well. You can call it the Division with Zombies and No Cover System. I, I think that's also kind of apt and on the nose for what the game is trying to be. Uh, but at the end of the day, the goal of the game is for you to do quests, to go out and explore a wide open world. I've played for about 10 hours right now, and I've only uncovered this little area right here. And the map appears to intend to go all the way up to the north. I don't know if that's actually going to be true or not, or if that's going to be like dead space up there. But as it stands right now, I've reached about level 10 or t level 11 in the 10 hours that I've played. And I've enjoyed my time. This one actually kind of surprised me. I think when it comes to the realm of zombie survival sandboxes, especially when they come with sort of an MMORPG integration that requires you to be around other people. A lot of the time they fall into a couple of categories of like sociopath simulators where it's mostly just like griefing and messing with each other, pay to win nonsense that's just trying to capitalize on the zeitgeist as hard as possible. And then from there, I find that a lot of inexperienced novice developers tend to be attracted to these sandboxy, large sprawling games as their first project because they've never really developed anything before they don't know what they're getting into and so the game gets criminally underserved turns out to be a giant lumpy stinky turd and everybody starts hating zombie games even more as that goes along this does not appear to be that kind of a cynical case this is actually reasonably well made it's difficult for me to express oh that one was a mimic damn all right, let's get the Mimic out of here. Some of the treasure boxes are Mimics. And that one's an insult to injury Mimic right there because we didn't even get treasure. Usually you still get treasure after you kill the Mimic, but not that time around. Hurtful. Hurtful. That's the best way I know how to describe that. Uh, but thus far, this game has kind of surprised me. It's been difficult to appraise the netcode performance. Largely due to the fact that right now they're stress testing. So if you see rubber banding, if you see mobs acting oddly, uh, that's supposed to be happening. I have this straight out of the developer's mouth. I've actually got a DM running with them right now on Twitch. I have it straight from the developer's mouth that they're stress testing and they've let in like five, six times as many people as they expected to. So they didn't think anybody was going to be interested in the game. Uh, they released this beta and they thought they weren't going to get any signups. They figured they'd have like under 10,000 signups and then it turns out that they got 50 or 60,000 and because they just had an open button on on the front page of their website they ended up with way more people in the beta than they expected yesterday i had to wait over an hour in queue just to get into the game that's really really good that means that there is interest in the game however they're stress testing right now so if you see mobs doing weird stuff or whatever it's because the servers are under like a catastrophic load that's not going to oh my god is that a baby head spider made out of fingers? Good lord. That's because they're stress testing the servers at the moment just to see what they can take. So you're going to see some weird network issues. And that's why I brought up it's going to be difficult for me to appraise the network performance of the game. Just because this is non-typical non playtime. Oh, get out of here, dude. Oh, it's an explodo spider. Even better. 
Uh, but according to the gameplay right here, they've done a pretty good job. This actually surprised me. I've played it for five hours on stream, and then I played it for about five hours in my free time, which I almost never do because I'm always preparing for a video or something. So the fact that I made time to play around with it with my busy schedule, working 60 or 70, God damn it, it's another mimic. Uh, working 60 or 70 hours a week to kind of get coverage mashed out left and right. I still managed to squeeze in a five-hour play session is pretty impressive for me, and it means that I was well lubricated and motivated to get it done. And some of the things that I found appealing about the game is that the open world structure is very sandboxy, but also they've taken on lessons from other MMORPGs like Warhammer Online or something like Guild Wars 2. There's public events around where you can meet up with dozens of other players to fight giant monsters that take up half the screen. There's dungeons. Uh, within the first couple hours of playing the game, you will be doing your first boss assassination dungeon. I haven't gotten any past that, but I just finished it last night, so I haven't really been looking either. And then from there, they've got that topped off with gameplay that doesn't actually feel that bad. There's little areas for improvement, uh, just in general game design that I think that they can pull off. But the overall gameplay itself, where it's like, what is the core of what your game does. And the core of what this game does is base building, hoarding resources, crafting new supplies that you've unlocked uh, via interaction with the environment, fighting zombies, that kind of stuff, and then shooting at enemies. I mean, that's really the main portion of the game and they've got that pretty good. I mean, look at this revolver animation. That's not bad. Like, that's a really, really snappy, good revolver animation right there. And this was completely unnecessary. They didn't even need to add that. The game already supports third-person shooting that feels nearly identical to something like The Division. And so they just added that on in for people that wanted to first-person shoot a little bit. And they actually put effort into it. They made it look good. I've got another weapon over here that you can take a look at. I've crafted an AK-47 last night, or an AKM, sorry. Oh, we don't want to deal with him. Those guys right there one-tap you if they explode. Oh, wow, there's a bunch of bad guys around here. Somebody must have been traveling down the road and wiped these out right before I started recording. But over here, so we've got ourselves a point of interest. This is harbor side. Uh, the way that... Oh, I'm being attacked. Go ahead and knock them on out real quick. But basically, the map is ranged into questing areas, and then there's also kind of like public areas, like harbor side right here. Inside these areas, usually there will be a number of kind of like subquests, things that are destroy elite enemies, destroy normal enemies, find weapon and gear crates, and then find the mysterious treasure. Most maps, the mysterious treasure is kind of like this map-wide puzzle that you've got to figure out uh, in order to... Oh, he dodged my bullets right there. He dodged my bullets right there. Uh, usually there's kind of like this map-wide quest, like you've got to gather a fuse, put it in a fuse box, that opens a door, and there's a secret chest inside of it. Uh, that's usually what it means by secret treasure. One of the ones that I did is that you had to find a bunker key, and somebody had a bunker in their backyard or whatever, and after you have the bunker key, you can open up the bunker, and there was like a treasure chest in there that had like better than normal stuff. And once you clear those objectives out, you get a fat grip of XP as though you completed a quest, uh, you get yourself some rewards, and then you move on to the next area to either work on the storyline or do it in the next little town area. And the little town areas are not boring. There's not a lot of copy pasta in this game. With regards to things like the enemy variety and the environmental variety, I look for things like copy pasta when I play a game like this because the incentivization is there for developers to reuse assets and things like that to save on budgetary constraints. But that doesn't really appear to be the case with this title. The areas that I've explored so far are diverse. They're interesting. They all appear to have been handmade with a different theme and a different atmosphere in mind. I've gone to places that are trailer parks. I've gone to what appears to be a big smelter, effectively, like a smelting facility for like an off-mining facility. Right now I'm taking a look at this harbor and we're fighting zombies. There was kind of like a sunken ward bayou area that I saw. Oh my god, okay. There was a sunken area bayou type area uh, that I was interacting with a little bit earlier that kind of reminded me of Louisiana. Like, they've got a lot of different environments in here and it's clear that the set pieces were made by hand by someone 
that cared and was actually trying to make things different. On top of that, there's like a gazillion different zombie and enemy types that we've run into. They've sort of slowed down in their deployment, but from the beginning of the game, I think we were playing for like three hours on Twitch, and somebody in chat was like, wow, we've seen like a lot of enemy types in this first three hours, and I couldn't do anything but agree. There's been bugs, there's been alligators, there's been wolves, there's been... Zombies of every type from doctor zombies to construction zombies to you name it. There's flying monsters. There's like blanky tigers. There, There's a lot of mobs in this game that all have different attack patterns and different things that they do that sort of break up the monotony of exploring the map and make it more interesting to grab stuff. Also titillates the brain and forces you to learn strategies for destroying each of those mobs because some of them have specific interactions and ways uh, that you've got to take them down, and I think that's really good. But for now, what am I working on inside of the game? He said 20 minutes on into the video. Right now, I'm just free roaming. That's pretty much it. I'm just cruising around the map, picking up goodies, and trying to supply myself with the things that I need. You spend a lot of time in this game, not like farming for ammo, but definitely preparing to craft more ammo. It gets easier once you get to the second tier areas. I'm in the second tier area right now. Inside the second tier area, you seem to loot gunpowder a lot more frequently, and man, you Manufacturing gunpowder tends to be the big limiting reagent that keeps you from being able to make ammo right this second 90% of the time in my experience. So once you start getting gunpowder and loose loot, it gets easier to supply yourself with firearms. But I'm cruising around the map. I'm looking for supplies. I'm looking for interesting crates. Uh, you can get blueprints to craft new gear and new things inside crates. So new armors, new helmets, new guns. They do have different things that they do. You can take a look right here while we're in a safe space. This is my character. All my stats are over here. These are my weapons. I've got a revolver and I've got an AKM and a torch for melee. I'm being attacked again because, of course, the game just can't leave me alone while I'm trying to talk to my audience. Wow, that's a chunky alligator right there. He's not trying to mess with us. That guy took some serious DACA to take out. Don't squirm. I want your parts. There we go. So I've got his parts all taken care of. Back to what we were talking about now that my health has been depleted and my bar has been corrupted a little bit. In your gear menu, you've got different guns, different weapons, different armor. They're kind of limited selection right now. For tier one, there's three armor sets, and I think there's two different pistols, one SMG, one rifle, and one shotgun in tier one. That's going to need to be diversified considerably. So like probably to four or five times as many per tier. Uh, you're going to want to have a lot more guns on in there just so people have a lot of options and interesting things to play around with to fit their player style. However, these guns also have things that they do. So I've got, for example, my Hunter 500S right now. It has a weapon passive that every time I reload, it randomly consumes one or two bullets from my overall supply. And each bullet that it consumes uh, gives me plus 10% damage, so it hits harder. That's one of the reasons why this revolver is super meta right now, is because it's actually broken compared to all the other weapons with how much damage it does. But every single piece of equipment and every single set and every single gun in the game, it all has a function. It has a thing that it does and you'll want to read those descriptions. Uh, inside the beta right now, the game is not fully translated. Uh, if you see Chinese around anywhere, sorry. I, I mean, the game's not fully translated. It doesn't come out for like another year to another year and a half, so they don't have the game fully translated yet. It's mostly translated, though. You'll figure it out. I've only had trouble with what the game wanted from me due to a bad translation twice in the 10 hours that I've played, where the thing it was saying on screen was completely different than what it actually wanted because it was clear there was some kind of translational issue. But it's mostly okay. But you will run into, I don't know if it's Mandarin or Cantonese or standardized Chinese. I don't know. I'm, I'm not educated enough to know. But you will occasionally run into chunks of text or tooltips that are in Chinese uh, if you're playing around with the beta. Forget what I was saying. Oh yeah, every weapon and every armor has its own kind of like function and play style that it supports. There's like a melee suit, there's a suit that helps you be a pack rat and carry more gear and be greedy, that kind of stuff. And you kind of pick and choose between the ones that you like the best. Got another bug right there, we'll go and wipe him out quick. Along the way you're going to level up. When you level up, you get access to your cradle, which is this backpack right here with a butterfly inside of it. I can't explain to you exactly what the butterfly is. Because, once again, this game is heavily Kojima-inspired. But, inside your backpack, when anomalies happen in this world, 
paper butterflies appear, and you can capture the paper butterflies in your backpack. You can take them back to your base and put them inside of a holding tank and harvest them for electricity or something. That's basically what it's got going on right now. That's why I have a butterfly on my back. Using a kill, it refills two bullets from the inventory. Yeah, we can do that. Sure. I forgot to put in my override node. But when you level up, you get these things called memetics. Uh, so you're going to get more HP, more damage, that kind of stuff. But you also get these memetics. This is just like Icarus. This allows you to craft different things inside of your base. So here you can see that I've got double barrel shotguns, AKMs, PDWs, all that kind of stuff. We also have base defenses because your base will get attacked from time to time by the zombies. I've got lighting mechanisms over here. I've got armor storage, fences, all kinds of things that I can learn from, that I can build from fortifications to medication to food. There's lots of it. I'll probably unlock the new food cooking because we're in the tier 2 area. I'll probably unlock electricity too, but I'm running out of money. So unfortunately, I can't unlock more ciphers for right now. But we'll just keep on cruising. I should probably take you back and show you the base building. Uh, the base building, I think, is one of my big complaints about the game. Not because it's bad, but because of the way it's implemented. I think it actually makes the map uglier, and I think it makes the game less atmospheric and immersive. And for me personally, as someone that values immersion to almost like a tremendous extent it's almost a deal breaker for me but not quite uh, let's go back to base and we can take a look at it oh god we got an elite over here i didn't even realize okay so we need to run away like right this second uh we got to shoot him and his weird little it's not the tumor yeah we got to shoot him in his weird little shoulder tumor and then he'll die he should drop oh he's not an elite when they're an elite, their wieners glow blue after you kill them. Uh, he just gave me three acid. All right, that's fine. The game does fully have fast travel. You can teleport around as you see fit. My house is over here in, like, the newbie starter zone. This is my home. I built it yesterday, actually. What I'm working on right now is the building of a motorcycle so that I can have a vehicle to get around faster. And so that's my vehicle bay. But here lies my complaint about this game. A housing should be instanced. So this game allows you to build wherever you want on the map. Uh, you can build wherever you'd like to build, just like in Rust, and you put down kind of like a claim block, seven days to die style, and then that area is yours. People can still harvest out of it, they can still kill mobs inside of it, but at the end of the day, you end up with a map that looks like this, where there's ugly square player warts all over the place. I have a fundamental problem with this from a game design standpoint, because you hired and you paid a salary to map designers, to texture designers, uh, to people that were basically creating a setting and an atmosphere and an ambience like these guys spent their time and their expertise creating a map that evoked certain images from the zeitgeist and certain references to pop culture and certain cultural touchstones and certain visual markers that make people get immersed and make people enjoy exploring your world and then promptly right after that you created a system that allows players to put ugly four by four blocks all over it, blocking the scenery, blocking the towns, blocking the areas where you farm mobs, blocking the eye line, blocking the points of interest that you can see visually that guide you from one location to another. That right there is one of the few parts of the game so far that I think is addled uh, with regards to the overall design, and I highly recommend you think about maybe going with instanced player housing instead. Or, for example, when you're on the map, everybody is in a different instance. Uh, so I'm in World 3, The Untold, right now. Make it so that in the adventuring instances, you can't build. So you have no build maps, and then you also have, like, six or seven build maps that player can teleport into and have their bases inside of. And when you teleport, your base is always marked no matter what instance you're in. And it's always there no matter what instance you're in, but everybody else's is gone. And you can only see everybody else's bases if you're in the free build instance basically there's a number of ways around this that i think would actually preserve and respect your map designers design and vision a little bit better without blocking it all off it's one of my big complaints but inside your base uh, there's lots of things you can do inside your base there's lots of loose loot around loose loot is almost universally used for salvaging uh, so you bring it back to base like this right i guess i could just select all i enjoy clicking though and then once you salvage everything it'll give you resources that you can use to craft right now inside my base i built this entire place and the building snapping system seems to feel pretty good it all works reasonably well that's my rock feature right there in the corner of my house. 
it looks purdy. I can cook meals over here. So, for example, if I wanted to make some dried blueberries, I could do that. If I wanted to distill sugar from beets, I could do that right there. You can queue up crafting as you like in this title. And so we've got multiple things queued up right there, and we'll just come back when it's done. This is the weapon bench where you can upgrade your weapons, you can craft your weapons, you can calibrate your weapons, you can repair your weapons, which in fact I probably need to do right about now. I've been cruising around getting into trouble, and my revolver's probably looking a little bit scuffied. This is my chemistry bench over here. I can make bullets and medicine. Uh, this right here is my armor bench where we can make various armor sets that do different things. We can also upgrade our armor if we have have the parts to do it I do indeed have the parts to do it so I could sit here and I could just upgrade the stats on my armor right there and you can just do that uh, I need stardust though in order to take it further that's fine just go ahead and upgrade that stuff I'm all right with being a little stronger and having a tiny bit higher pollution resist so as you can see that's how the calibration system works you get more HP you get a little bit stronger you do have meters that you have to babysit in this game outside of the crafting if you look down below I've got water meters I've got hunger meters you've also got a sanity meter the lower that that gets the lower your total HP will get I don't know what the yellow meter is underneath that I still haven't found my XP meter either I just seem to level up randomly and I just kind of shrug and accept it uh, but that's the base building. I do, if you wanted to see it in action, I do need to make a whole bunch more bronze. Like, a lot more bronze. The game also has environmental harvesting. So, for example, while you're running around, if you see a tree, just like in New World, you can chop down that tree if you want. If you see a rock, you can harvest that rock. If you see a bush with berries, you can harvest that bush with berries. Uh... All of the stuff that you see in the game just around is harvestable, pick upable. If you want to shoot that deer right there, you can shoot that deer right there and give him the blappers, and then you can go and harvest him for meat and hides, just in case you needed those for crafting. Everything in this game is incentivized, so every time you craft, you get some XP as well, so the game is not entirely about adventuring when you compare it to other games. In this title, every time, so if I make these bronzes over here, you'll see when they come out of the cooker that I get XP for this craft right here. So when I did that, 62 XP. That's roughly the equivalent of killing four mobs. Not bad, right? You just get like these little bonuses while you're running around. But the reason why I wanted that bronze is because I wanted to see if we could maybe craft the motorcycle while we're live right now. I've got a motorcycle that I can make. And I don't know... There we go. We'll throw an engine in it. We'll throw a wheel on it. We'll throw that on it and we'll throw the handlebars on it yeah there we go we made our first motorcycle so we should be able i think to to summon the damn thing there we go i gotta hold down the g key i figured it out let's summon our motorcycle then so that we can take a look at it can i add fuel oh i've got portable fuel mix nice cool i must have picked that up randomly while i was cruising what happens if i go off the rail right here nice dude we got ourselves like a motorcycle We've got like a better way to get around the map. They're giving us some epic music right now to go along with it. Uh, this game is a pretty good beta. I'm really impressed with where the game is at for having a year or more left of development time for them to play around with. I'm actually kind of surprised by how much time they have left with how solid of a product this is. It impressed me. This is a good beta for having a year of runway left. It's not without problems, so the voice acting is absolutely terrible. The storyline thus far has been like nonsensical and impossible to figure out. Uh, they would have been better off almost with text dialogue. The voice acting is so bad, but I'm hoping that it's like placeholders for right now, but I can't really say. From there, there have been networking issues, but as I said earlier in the video, they're running the servers at like 6x capacity right now to stress test, so it's difficult to tell how much of that netcode is going to persist, but I will say that the game is still pretty snappy for being at 6x right now, and for constantly the servers being overloaded with a queue. You know what I mean? Like, there's a, there's like the ding game. Look, I, when I shoot my gun, dude, here, I'll break out a gun. And this is with a gazillion trillion people on the server, right? Okay, we got visual artifacting right when I was trying to talk about how awesome everything was. But these things happen. It's a beta. You know what I mean? They've got a year till release. They've got time to clean this on up. My main concern with a title like this 
is how it's going to be monetized. That's what always worries me the most, is how are they making money on this title? Is it going to be buy-to-play? Is it going to be free-to-play with microtransactions? There's already a skin shop in the game where you can buy skins for your motorcycle and for your armor and stuff like that. And when I was talking to the developers and direct messages, they said that there will be no pay-to-win and no pay-to-advance. But I think that's a thing that we've heard before a lot of the time uh, from from various sources. Like, we as gamers have been burned with that line a lot of times in the past. And so, like, I, I still remain apprehensive about any game that has a cash shop of any kind. But we'll just have to wait and see. For right now, this was a very promising beta. I've played it for about 10 hours and I enjoyed my time with it. I'm looking forward to it and playing it in its completed version. And it turned out to be much more than I expected it to be. This is a game with a lot of content and a lot of things and a lot of depth and stuff to play around with thus far. And a year away from release, it's in pretty good shape, especially during stress testing. So my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. I think these developers may have something big on their hands. I think they may be in line to make a lot of money as of right now. Time will tell, I suppose. We'll check back in on the game in like a year. Maybe I'll stream it or something like that once it comes out. Uh, but for right now, my impressions of the beta are positive. There's a few things that I would change around. There's a few things that I think are at odds with one another, but none of them are deal breakers. They're all things that are tolerable. I'll see y'all next time, and thank you for spending your time with me, folks. Bye-bye.